Hello good people of Claremont, my name is Stuart Lee, I'm from Tier Fund Scotland um, and I just want to share a little bit about uh, a trip that I was recently on with Tier Fund out to Ethiopia and this year at Tier Fund Scotland we are highlighting an Ethiopia campaign where basically we want uh, as many churches, as many, uh, as many people as possible to hear about this work that's happening in Ethiopia and to pray, pray for it, pray with us, support us financially if that's appropriate to you, uh, and just get the word out there about this campaign. So it all started in February. Myself and a small team uh, from Scotland went out to Afar, uh, which is in the northeast of Ethiopia, uh, a very uh, hot and dry climate, um, and a place that has in recent years been absolutely devastated by uh, climate change. We visited two villages, two different villages in Afar, um, and I want to share with you just what it was like going from one of these villages to the other, a very different experience. The first village we visited was a typical, uh, a typical community in Afar that is really struggling because of the effects of climate change. Um, this was a place where people would normally in the past have to go a five minute journey, five, 10 minute journey on foot to collect water. They had a, a local river that were, uh, there, would, there would be ample water for them, other water sources nearby. But over the past five years, rain has, has stopped falling. The rain, it used to rain for four months a year, predictably. And now it's down to less than one month a year. And we were actually there in February when it should have been rainy. But looking around, there was not a cloud in the sky and every bit of ground was dry and barren. And so they're, they're, they had no, they've got no access to water. And every morning at 4 a.m., the women from this village go on a 10 hour round trip walking to, to get water from the nearest place that they can get safe water. Up to 10 hours every single day, every single day. I couldn't believe it when I heard this. And they get back about early afternoon from this 10 hour journey and they've got as much water as they can carry for their households. And, and then they've got to get on with the rest of, of their work. They've got, the, they've got goats to tend to, they've got children to raise, household work, they've got all sorts going on there. And, and it really broke my heart to hear just what life was like, relentless. There wasn't a day off for, for these people. And the men were looking after camels and, and goats and other livestock that were slowly dying one by one eh, as there wasn't enough grass, there's not enough water. But when I was in this village, because of all that and hearing all of, all of that that was going on, one thing that we noticed as a team was just the, the heaviness that there was over the, over the place. A real uh, lack of, of joy, a lack of um, uh, noise and laughter in, in the air. And I remember seeing that there was a, a group of children under a tree uh, taking shade and they were just sitting there, uh, not really moving around, not really making much noise for the whole afternoon that we were there. And there was one child who just had a whistle, a plastic whistle in his mouth, and every now and again we just blow this whistle. And that was the only form of fun, but there was no, there was no laughter, there was nothing else happening there. And you could see the strain in people's faces. Um, it wasn't a happy place. It wasn't a place with much joy. But we visited a second village a couple days later and this is one where Tear Fund's partner, uh, a, a great Christian organization in Ethiopia, had gone in and dug a borehole, water source, a well, um, and uh, they had this solar, solar panelled well and water gushing out of the ground uh, in this incredible system. And as soon as I stepped in, we stepped into this village, we could just hear laughter in the air, we could hear noise, we could hear people having conversations and, and, and just movement. There was a lot of people moving around. 
women were i mean you couldn't you couldn't make up the scene women were were filling up these barrels with this pure amazing source of water just pouring out filling up barrels of water and as the water cascaded off the barrels children were playing in the mist of the water and laughing and and playing games and it was a wonderful sight my colleague turned to me and he said my ethiopian colleague he said where there is water there is life where there is water there is life isn't it amazing that just having access to local clean abundant water can be so so transformative for a community and that's what we're trying to do we're trying to follow jesus where the need is greatest that's what tier fund tier fund are committed to and we ask you to join us following jesus where the need is greatest reaching out to our neighbors who are really struggling just now especially with everything else that's happening just now things were hard in february believe me it'll be much much harder now so we'd welcome you to to help us uh, you can head to tierfund.org forward slash give water give water uh, tierfund.org forward slash give water you can pray for us you can get behind us there's ways of volunteering or if it's appropriate for you to give we'd welcome you uh, to support this work as well but that's all from me um, and yeah i hope to see you in person soon god bless Bye bye your neighbor is thirsty but there is a solution and there is hope for many people in the north of ethiopia the impact of climate change is devastating. They used to expect rain up to four months a year, but now it only falls in August. People don't have enough water to survive. It is an issue of life or death. And for families like Orbisa's, everyday life is a real struggle. My name is Orbisa and I have nine children. Life is very challenging here. We have no food and are dependent on our livestock for our livelihood. Whenever there is no rainfall, our animals die as there is no grass or water. This affects our lives significantly. We will not get money or have milk to drink. We have no other option. When it rains, I only need to walk five minutes to collect water, but these water sources are now dry. Every night, I walk for 10 hours to collect water from a lake. The walk is dangerous. I can face wild animals such as hyenas and leopards. The water I collect is not sufficient. I am only able to collect less than half of what my family needs each day. We need most of it for drinking, but sometimes it is not enough and my family has to go to bed thirsty. I feel extremely sad whenever I cannot provide water for my children. It hasn't rained for six months, and I don't know when it will rain next. It is God who knows when the rainfall will come. I worry about my children and my family. I worry about the small livestock which are remaining. I feel worried whenever I think about the future. If we could get water access in our village, this would change things for me. This is the first and most important thing that would give me hope. Orbisa's story is sadly all too common. Forced to find any kind of water, more people are getting sick and their livestock, their only source of income, are dying due to lack of water. Because of climate change, the area has become even more dry and arid, like a desert. People are suffering and many are giving up hope. But there is good news. Tear Fund is changing lives by working with local partners to set up solar-powered wells that will provide clean water closer to communities. This will help to restore hope and give new life for all who live there. In the last 10 years, droughts are increasing from year to year. Availability of water is very, very difficult. Tear Fund has started now working with FSA, saving lives by creating access to portable water, drilling boreholes and developing water supply systems. The greatest joy and happiness we could see in communities is when they get water. Lives are being changed and they are seeing the love of Jesus. When we provide water for these communities, we are changing the lives of the coming generations too. The young people, the children, their lives will change definitely when we provide water for them. 12 pounds per month for a year 
could provide 12 families with access to a life-saving water source, giving hope and a future to communities like Orbisa's. Please donate now.